Welcome back for another video guys. Thanks for joining me. If you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, you're awesome. Thank you. Let's get into the video, which is bleeding the coolant system on the E36 M3. So if you didn't watch the last video of changing the coolant expansion reservoir tank thing and the cap for that, be sure to go watch that video if you have any questions on doing that. It was a pretty easy test to do overall, but just a little tedious because you got to like jam your hands in there if you don't want to take apart the whole system here to make space for yourself. Now this is the pretty easy part, which is bleeding the coolant system, which hopefully everything checks out with the install. We're going to get into bleeding it down. First things first, get your car jacked up. The higher the better, but you don't have to go too crazy. You really want, you want basically the higher, highest point of the coolant system to be your bleed, your bleed valve or the cap. We got it jacked up. These jacks, um, they're a little bit taller than Harbor Freight jacks. These are your standard Harbor Freight jacks that, that have gotten recalled multiple times. And these are the ones I bought off Amazon that were actually pretty good reviews and all that stuff. So if you want to, if you're considering stepping your game up with the the jack stands, I'm gonna leave this link down below for these jack stands because they're uh, they're a lot safer. But like I said, they're a little bit taller to start off with. Just get the car up in the air. Make sure your e-brakes on, be as safe as possible. I chopped one wheel, probably should have did both, but, but I only did one. So now that the car's up in the air, coolant is topped off to the cold fill line. Now we're just gonna get this thing started up and you're gonna turn the heat on full heat and full blast. Neutral. Neutral. Okay. Let's go. Full heat. Full blast. Now here comes the easy part. Just wait. So what you're gonna do, you take that little pink cap off and you're just gonna wait for this to heat up and then you're gonna see bubbles starting to come out of that. Wait for the bubbles to start. If you're not completely familiar with how the heating system works in your car, it actually uses the hot coolant to heat the heater core and stuff like that inside the car. So that's why you put it on heat and full blast so you circulate it through the entire system. If you don't do it, you could still get some bubbles in your system. Obviously when things heat up they expand so that's why you're leaving your cap on tight. That's why you don't really take the cap off when your car is up to temperature and you definitely don't do it if your car is overheating. Just leave that on and just wait it out for a little while let it cool down. You will get burns. Like I said just wait it out. Now we'll be back when it heats up a little bit and some bubbles start coming out. Be right back. Wait, wait. I put the bleed screw back in because it was just shooting water all over the place, so it's probably good. I'm just going to leave it a little bit longer uh, with the bleed screw on. All right, so I actually decided to top off the coolant and then uh, continue to let it go. So I the bleed screw Looks like the bubble was stopping, it was slowing down for sure, but uh, just going to let it go for a little bit longer. I'm not sure if it's... That hose is pretty warm, the other hose is pretty warm. So I guess we're up to temp, just to let that stop bubbling for a little bit. Took it off the jack stands and, and whatnot, took it for a quick test drive. When you do that, make sure you keep your eye on the temperature gauge that it doesn't move at all. So I drove it around the neighborhood a little bit back and forth and it didn't move at all. So um, right now we're good. So next couple of times I drive it, I'm just gonna make sure I keep an eye on that just to, just to completely be sure because there could always just be the bubble that didn't make its way through the system or whatnot, but pretty simple. So there you have it. This is the only area you're working with on this car. Pretty much every other car you bleed it the same way, but um, bleeders might be in different spots. I know my 240 when I had it, uh, I wound up deleting the bleeder valve, so I had to just jack the front way up and just go from the radiator cap, stuff like that. But as you saw, Pretty simple process. The longer you take now to make sure it's bled properly, the less headache it is in the future. So take your time, no rush, and it's simple as that. So I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this quick one of bleeding the coolant system on the E36 M3. Like I said earlier, it's, it's a very similar process on basically every single car. So if you could do this one, you could do just about every car. That's it. If you learned anything, hit that like button. 
If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button, leave some questions down below. I'll try to do my best to answer them. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. Because we got a little, got a couple more little projects to do with this car. Got to do some stuff with the truck. And we got to start working on the 190 back there, which I keep saying, but I keep uh, being too lazy to start on it. But see you guys in the next one. Peace out.